Decagon's Soil Moisture Sensors, Calibration Methods, and Theory. Decagon's soil moisture sensors measure the dielectric constant, or permittivity, of the soil rather than actual water content. The dielectric constant is a unitless property that describes how well a material can hold electric charge. The dielectric constant of water is 80, which is much higher than the materials found in dry soil. This makes the dielectric constant easy to measure with capacitance sensors like Decagon's echo probes. A calibration relates the instrument output to the volumetric water content of known soils. All Decagon sensors are calibrated in the factory resulting in plus or minus 3% accuracy for a wide variety of soils. If your research is in non-typical soils, or if you simply require better accuracy, the following steps for a custom calibration will increase your accuracy to approximately plus or minus 1% volumetric water content. For help with custom calibrations for potting soil or rock wool, contact Decagon directly. Obtain about 1 gallon or 4 liters of soil from the specific depth and location where you intend to install your sensors. Also, make a few bulk density measurements so that you can replicate the field bulk density in the lab. Let the soil dry completely. Break up any large clods and run the soil through a 5 mm sieve. First pack the soil into a calibration container approximating the field bulk density. It is generally necessary to add the soil in layers, packing each layer before adding the next. After the soil is packed into the container, insert the sensor and the black plastic base vertically into the soil. If you are using the EC5, 5TE, or ECTM, insert the sensor directly into the packed soil by hand. When using the 10HS, the EC10, or the EC20, Use the insertion tool to create a pilot hole for the sensor. Be sure the tool goes straight into the soil without any lateral movement, which would create gaps in the sample and result in mistaken readings. Take a probe reading of raw data, using the device that you will be using to log data in the field. This is important because different loggers vary in their excitation voltage, and the output of some sensors depends on excitation voltage. At this point, you will either have raw counts if you are using Decagon data loggers, or a millivolt output if you are using CSI loggers. If you are calibrating the 5TE or the ECTM, which are digital sensors, you will have unprocessed raw parts. You'll want to repeat getting probe readings a few times to check that you are getting consistent numbers. The next step is to collect a volumetric soil sample. Insert the volumetric soil sampler fully into the undisturbed soil near the probe. Remove the sampler, shave excess soil from the end with a flat edge. Place the sample in an oven-proof container and close the lid. You now have one point on your calibration curve, consisting of one reading from the sensor and one soil sample from which to determine the volumetric water content associated with that reading. Now you're ready to make another point on the calibration curve. Dump the soil from the calibration container into your large mixing container and add 200 to 300 milliliters of water. Mix thoroughly with your hands or a trowel until the mixture is homogeneous. Then repeat the sensor reading and volumetric sampling steps. Continue this process until the soil is saturated. Next, weigh all of the soil samples that you took with the volumetric soil sampler and then put them in the oven at 105 degrees Fahrenheit for 24 hours to dry off all of the water. Weigh the samples again after they are dry. The difference in weight is the volume of water that was in the samples. This whole process generally yields 5 to 7 calibration points. Make a graph with volumetric water content values on the y-axis and raw counts on the x-axis. Then construct a calibration function based on this graph. The relationship is often linear, but is sometimes best fit with a quadratic equation, especially in soils with high organic matter content. You should now apply this equation to the raw data that you download from your loggers. If you are using DataTrack software, you can apply the calibration function under the Setup tab. If you are using Echo Utility software, you can apply the calibration to the downloaded Excel file. For CSI loggers, apply the calibration in your data logger program or during post-processing. For more information about calibration methodology or theory, go to our website, www.decagon.com, under the Education tab. We are also happy to answer your questions personally. Contact us at support at decagon.com.